What's happening guys? Welcome back to the workshop. Now in this video we're going to build a bandsaw box. So this is a multi-layered bandsaw box. Turned out really nice. Um, it's sapili maple. It has birch ply in the center and I use a material that I have not used before which is this color core from Front Mica. It's a black color core so I use that just to uh, layer between the layers or to line between the layers and it really gives that distinct black line between each layer which really sets it off I think. And uh, it was a test to see whether this works with the wood glue. Also halfway through the build we have an absolute catastrophe with the bandsaw and we have to recover well. So that's going to be all in this video. So there you go guys, let's crack on and build a bandsaw box. let's kick off this project. Now I have all the pieces already milled up ready to go so we have our sandwich this is going to be our bandsaw box so it's going to be roughly just over four inches just over 100 millimeters so I get you in for a closer look I'll show you the materials we're going to use and I'll give you a quick look at the design let's do it. Okay a quick look at the design then guys here we go so I kept it nice and simple so I just picked the center point took my compass and drew an arc measured down about 30 millimeters and just drew another arc from the same center point that gave him my inner inside drawer and I measured down 30 mil from this line to my base so that keeps that thickness and this thickness the very same two little arcs then for the feet the feet then start in line with the edge of my drawer so everything is nice and in line everything is symmetrical and matches up so it's a nice simple little design for a bandsaw box I'm going to keep it nice and simple I'm kind of doing a bit of an experiment on this one so we don't want to do anything too complicated because I'm not sure the laminations are going to stay together so we're going to test this out so here's what we're going to use this is a piece of sapili so we have sapili maple and we have birch ploy so first layer is sapili Next, what I'm going to be using is some of this color core. Now, this is color core. It's from Formica. So it's meant to adhere really well with wood glue, so I'm told. But it has a shiny side and a dull side. This is the side you glue. But I want to use this as a sandwich. So I'm going to scuff this up now. And hopefully it um, holds in the layer. So again, it's color core is what it's called. It's from Formica. Uh, Formica are actually a company, I believe. And uh, it's known as Formica as well. So you can see... Uh, for the Formica group and uh, it has color core written on the plastic that it comes on and this is available in loads of different colors so if this works uh, it could be an idea for making layers for your bandsaw box so again color core by Formica then we have a piece of maple another piece of color core so I really want to highlight the joints my center piece then is going to be a piece of Baltic birch ploy another piece of color core a piece of maple a piece of color core and then we have a piece of sapili on the bottom so when we layer this all up, we'll have a black piece of color core between every layer because I really want to highlight the layers. So you will be looking at a sandwich like that. So you have a black line that will be visible between each layer. That's the idea when we glue this together. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a bit of 60 grit sandpaper to the shiny side of this formica, this color core. Um, scuff it all up and then we're going to sandwich this together and hopefully our laminations hold. Like I say, as always on this channel, it's always a bit of an experiment. So let's check it out. So there we go, we have the colour core sanded up, so I scuffed off all that shiny stuff, took the knife to it, scored it all up to give it every chance to hold to the wood glue. And I'm told it gets a really strong bond with wood glue, but obviously that shiny side is not going to stick to anything, so we shall see. <laughs> this is an experiment, so it could end in disaster, but we shall see. So now I just want to make sure that all my pieces are orientated in the right direction, that I have my grain the way I want it, and... Uh, this kind of has a kind of a sweeping grain pattern on this piece of sapili. So I've that orientated in the right way. Again, with a bandsaw box, you need to think about how you're going to enter the box with the saw cut. You want to follow that grain in so when you close up that joint, it's uh, difficult to see where you entered with the, with the saw cut. This will all make sense when this is all glued up and I go to actually do the initial cut if you've not seen the bandsaw box before. So uh, don't worry about it for now. So I've organized these, the right orientation. So this is the bottom of my pieces, this is the top. A couple of these maple pieces have cracks in them, so this one has a nice crack in the top for here, so I want to make sure that stays to the top, so that when I put on my template, I'm losing all that corner off it anyway, so any imperfections I want to keep to the waist side of my box. 
So yeah, that's good. Everything is lined up the way it needs to be. So now it's just a case of layer this up. I'm gonna be using Tight Bond 3. This is a pretty strong wood glue. So uh, we're not gonna take any chances with the glue. We'll use this. It's very, very good. I like it. I've used it for making guitars and stuff and it hasn't yet to fail on anything like that. And uh, that's all a laminated uh, neck through design. And that guitar is still holding, holding together pretty well. So as long as the color core works, this should stay together. So let's get on it. Not much to this, only just layer it up really. So plenty of glue. And your finger is probably one of the best glue spreaders that you have. There we go, that's the final piece of the cake. And that's gonna be the front of the box. So let's get this clamped up. There we are, we're all glued up. Now, I've got a lot of squeeze out, which I don't really mind. Um, I'm gonna leave it on top of my assembly table because my assembly table has like a melamine top on it so glue doesn't stick to it. So it can drip all over that and I can scrape it off. So there we go, I'm just gonna clean up my workbench now because there's quite a lot of glue on it. Okay, we have the blank taken out of the clamps now. Everything is glued up and it seems to be holding. So I just took it to the planar thickness R and I've squared off this edge. This is going to be the base. So you can see the kind of nice design now with the black lines in between the layers. It looks quite nice and it just highlights those layers. So the color core seems to be working. The glue seems to be holding up. It looks like it got a good tight fixing. So uh, I guess only time will tell with this whether the box falls apart or not, but it seems to be held together pretty good. So I've just transferred the drawing onto this now. Um, I've out of spray adhesive, otherwise I could have just stuck this sheet straight through it and used this to copy it or to just to cut it out. But I don't have no adhesive, like I said, so I've just drawn it on to the front of this piece. So now it's to the bandsaw and start cutting this out. Okay, so here we are at the bandsaw. So it is the process of cutting this out now that makes the bandsaw box. So the very first thing we have to do is cut the outside line and that's the shape for a box. Then we will stand the box up on edge and we will cut the back off the box. When we have the back off, then we cut the internal drawer out. Then we have to cut the front and back off the drawer, scoop out the center of the drawer, glue back on the front and back, glue back on the back on the box. And we can finish everything up then. So that's the procedure. You'll see it throughout the video anyway. So what I've in here now is a quarter inch uh, three TPI blade. So that's good for cutting tight curves and corners and shapes and all that kind of stuff. Make sure that your blade is exactly 90 degrees to your bed and that your bandsaw is fully set up. So hopefully this blade will track correctly for me now. And um, it's the setup of the bandsaw is everything trying to make these bandsaw boxes. So just make sure you get that right and uh, just proceed carefully and slowly. So let's get cutting this out. So the first thing we want to do, like I said, is cut the outside shape. Let's do that. So now that we have the outside shape cut off, we need to take a slice off the back of the box so that when we cut out our drawer, we're not cutting our drawer the whole way through the box and you don't see it on the back side. So we need to cut the back of the box off now. So I have my fence set up. I'm gonna take a roughly a 10 mil slice off the back of this. Hopefully it cuts nice and straight and accurate. This uh, bandsaw doesn't always cut as straight as at times and straight cuts like this always make me a little bit nervous. But we'll give it a bash and hopefully it turns out okay. So let's get on it. Okay, so that turned out to be a complete disaster. I can never cut a straight line with that blade. I should have just put the wider blade on it. Again, being lazy, 
changing blades takes about 10 to 15 minutes and the, I tried to chance it with that blade and it just tracked right off and broke out the back of the box. So that is a complete and utter disaster now. So now we have to try and recover from this. And uh, yeah, so my only option now really will be to glue this back on and to try and cut again. So we will glue this as best we can, try and hide that seam in the back of the box as best we can. Um, a little bit of a disaster, but it is what it is. Like always on this channel, I will show the mistakes as well as the good things. And you can see that blade just for whatever reason decided to head off into the box or out of the box rather than tracking in a straight line. So now let's glue this back on, put on the wider blade and try and cut it off again. Right, there we go, the back is glued back on. So yet again on this channel, we shall attempt to wrestle victory from the jaws of defeat <laughs> and try and salvage another botched project. But uh, these things happen and uh, lessons learned. So um, yeah, we'll have another attempt at this. Let's get on. Okay guys, this is day two. The back is glued on, so it's all set up now. So now we are on very much a rescue mission to save this project. So. I have a half inch blade now in the bandsaw all set up and ready to go. My three quarter inch blade is a little bit dull so I don't want to use that and hopefully I can get a straighter cut. I might actually try and freehand this on the bandsaw now. So now we have one more opportunity to make this cut and get it right. It is either success or disaster. Let's do it. Okay, we're all set up and ready to go. Like I say, I have the half inch blade in the bandsaw and I'm going to freehand this. So every time I put something against the fence, it seems to always pull for some reason. I have checked everything, everything is set up in square. The blade is tracking through. So I've just drawn a line over the top of this that I want to roughly follow. I'm going to try and attempt to take the back off this box. Let's do it. So that worked out a lot better. We have a nice slab cut from the back of it and it's a pretty consistent thickness all the way around. So when that gets glued back on, we should be able to hide it somewhat. It's not gonna be, ever be perfect from here on out, but uh, it's salvageable at least. So my blushes are saved, as they say. Now we're gonna cut out the center section. So we gotta take the quarter inch blade, put it back on the bandsaw, and we have to take out this section. Now, that quarter inch blade is qu quite flexible, so I'm a little bit apprehensive about this, but we're gonna give it a bash, let's do it. Okay, so I'm all set up again to make this internal cut and cut out what it will be our shelf. Now, the little decision I have to make here is where do I bring in my cut? So I could come in straight here at the shortest distance and re-glue that but I have no grain running in that direction. So what I think I might do is follow this grain line in. So come in at this angle, um, then hit onto the curve and straight down this line and around. That way when I close it back up, it should be, the cut should be in line with the grain. At least that's the theory. So that's what we're going to attempt. And uh, hopefully then it's not too visible when we go to glue this back together. So that's what we want to attempt. Let's do this. guys there we go that's the interior drawer cut out so you can see there's my entry point now i'll have to squeeze this and glue it back up that will be our drawer now um i could have designed it a little bit better allowed a bit more of a sweep and bend on the corners here so i had to take the blade out and around so it's off my line so i tried to keep it consistently consistently off the line the whole way around and try to match back in this corner um, as best i could so a little bit of a thinking ahead there would have been 
preferable, but uh, it's not too bad. Again, I think it's best with bandsaw boxes maybe not to keep such uniform, perfectly circular or straight edges. Try and keep everything curvy, that way you have a little bit more freedom. I try to keep a perfectly straight edge here and a perfectly uh, round edge here, which probably wasn't the best idea because it is kind of freehand work you're doing on the bandsaw. But there we go, that's that section cut out now. So now we have to clamp this, fill this with glue and clamp it back up again. And once that's set, we can uh, look at sanding all this, getting that all prepared. Next job we want to do now is cut the front off the shelf and the back off the shelf and then scoop out the inside and then we can put the front and back on, or drawer I should say, uh, next. So that's what we're going to do next, uh, is to cut the front and back off this drawer. Okay, so now that I have the front and the back off my drawer, I can now scoop out the center of the drawer and that's what's going to create the little drawer space. So then once that's scooped out again on the bandsaw, it's a case of put the drawer front and back on. And then we have a nice little scooped out area inside in here. Again, it's all kind of hand cut and hand carved. So uh, it doesn't have to be perfectly round. Just freehand it in. So I'm going to freehand that in now with the bandsaw. So I go cut this out. You don't have to watch me do this again. And then we go back to the gluing up stage. Let's do that. Okay, so we have all our pieces bandsawed up. So here is our box with the back. So we need to glue up our gap and glue our back back on. And that essentially makes our box. Here is our drawer. So again, I just took it to the bandsaw there, cut out the middle piece. So the back will go on like that. The front will glue back on just like this. And that's what creates our little box or our little drawer that goes inside in our box. So very, very simple. We might actually have a little bandsaw box by the end of this video. So now I just want to sand the inside of this. I'm going to take it to the spindle sander and give it a quick sand. And then I'm going to glue this guy up, sand the inside of this and then it's almost ready for glue together. Once it's glued together, then I'm gonna sand the outside of the box. So, let's get on. Okay, so I wanna do up the outside of this. So we wanna glue up this cut that we cut in with the bandsaw to get into our, our drawer section. So we wanna squeeze this together. We wanna to make sure we fill this entire gap now with glue, shouldn't be an issue. So we keep the curved pieces that you cut off the outside. These work really well for clamping calls, for clamping on curves. So I'm gonna stick this on this and that should allow me to clamp this and actually pull this together. So let's get plenty of glue down this now, make sure it runs into it. There we go, that should give us a good glue joint. Should give us plenty of squeeze out. So now, we wanna clamp this guy up. Get our clamp on this side. Perfect. So there we go, that's nice and squeezed up. We have plenty of squeeze out all around. We should be able to hide that joint. All going well. Okay, so the box is glued up. We'll leave that for a few hours. Now I've also just glued the front and back on the drawer. So I didn't actually sand the inside of the front and back of the drawer because I wanted to get a perfect alignment when I put everything back together so we could seal up those gaps nicely. I'll give it a light sand inside, but it's the inside of the drawer so it's not overly important. But that's it, the drawer is together now so we let that set up and now we can sand the outside of this and finish shaping it. So we need to leave there now for a couple hours, just let the glue set up and then it is sand the inside of the box, glue the back of the box on, then it's final sanding and assembly. My well, guys, I have proceeded on with the project. So I took these out of the clamps, I sanded up the drawer just to get it all prepared and ready. There's no point in me showing you sanding, it's, it's a very boring process. So the front and back are glued on and everything is nice and sanded up. Now I'm not gonna spend too much work on the inside of the drawer because there's no need really. So I've been to the lathe and I turned a little maple little uh, knob for the front of it. So I'm just gonna drill that in. I've left in a little eight mil shaft on it. So I'm gonna drill an eight mil hole straight through the front of the box. I'm gonna sit this into it and glue it in place. That's the plan for that. The box itself, I've just sanded around the inside and I've glued the backpack on. So the back is glued on there now. So this will be coming out of the clamps very shortly and uh, should be able to sand and finish the outside. Then we're almost home. So. Let's get this little handle fit to the front of the drawer and uh, yeah, it'll be a lot of sanding from here on. Here we go, just a little 
dab of wood glue on that and we should be good to go that should be good enough and then what I'm going to do is just flush trim off the little bit of tenon that's protruding through there and just give it a little sand and that should look pretty good Okay guys, the box is out of the clamps, the back is glued back on, so that glue has set up now for a couple of hours, so it's good and solid, so I can proceed on this. Now I have a lot of work to do on the outside of the box to get all this looking nice and smooth, and uh, I have a lot of lumps and cut marks to take out of it. So I'm going to crack on and do this, I'm going to take it to the spindle sander, smooth the outside of this box, and I'm going to hit it with the orbital sander. And when that's all done, I get back to you. It's just a bit of sanding, you guys don't need to see me doing that. So when it comes to fitting the drawer, we jump back in because we might use the router to even up the edges or the gap in the drawer. We'll have a look at that when it's time to do it. So I crack on it with some sanding and then I'll be back to you. Okay guys, we are all sanded up, so we're more or less ready to go. It's not perfectly round, but it's close enough. Now, what we have to deal with is the fact that the gap around this is not even. And I have a little bit of damage on this corner for where I try to come around with the uh, bandsaw blade and join up the original cut. So a little bit of uh, damage here that we need to try and camouflage. So I've pulled the handle out of the lid again. So what I'm going to do now is take this to the smallest roundover bit I have and hit the edge with a roundover bit of the box and the edge of the drawer. And that should help to camouflage the fact that the gap is slightly uneven and we could do a little repair on this corner as well. So to the router table now and we run this around the uh, roundover bit. there you go so we have a round over between our drawer and our box so you can see how that kind of evens up the gap the whole way around now do a little bit of sanding on this because it's a little bit of a rough finish the router left but that's not a problem i still have to address this small little area here but that's not too problem i'm going to hit that with the foil now and see if i can just camouflage it a small bit more but you can see the way it kind of fools the eye into thinking that the gap is just that little bit more even so if you ever end up with a box like this with an uneven gap hit it with a round over bit both on the drawer and on this and it really does help even up the gap right now i have a small bit more sanding to do i'm going to glue this uh, little handle back in and as soon as all that's done we get the finish on and we're almost home okay guys we are all ready for the finish have the little handle back on now and the drawer is moving nicely so it actually looks quite well it's not too bad a little bit rough here and there but you can't see where the bandsaw blade cut into the box which is nice you can on the side here okay through the say through the end grain, it's kind of hard to camouflage that, but it's more or less camouflaged. But in the front of the box, because we followed the grain in, you can't actually see that. So again, it's just a case of take this apart now and get some Danish oil on it. What else, my favorite finish. Oh yeah, I really have to try and use some other finishes because uh, I use this on nearly almost every project, but it's nice and easy to use. And it's a nice handy rub on finish. So let's get this on and see what it's gonna look like. And like I always say, applying the oil is my favorite part of any project. It's when you can really see the project come alive and that looks pretty, pretty nice. Okay guys, there we go, one bandsaw box complete. Not perfect, but it is pretty good. I'm pretty happy with how it turned out considering the catastrophe that uh, happened halfway through when we saw it out the back of the box there. That wasn't good, but you can't really see the line now, so it's, it's hidden quite well. You can still look, if you look for it, you'll see it. You can just see the line on the back of the box where the blade broke out as well, but it's, it's not too bad. And uh, I'm pretty happy with how it looks overall. Now, I would definitely stay away from straight lines and perfect circles. I think I've said that already in the video. So the next few of these I would make, I would definitely have more wavy lines in it. A bit more um, natural patterns, I suppose, rather than straight lines and circles drawn with compasses. Just because it is a kind of a freehand process cutting on a bandsaw. Also, new bandsaw blades, I would definitely change the ones I have that come to the end of their life. Um, that quarter inch blade really tracks off, which is a disaster. 
and uh, you really want to have your bandsaw really well set up. Um, another little thing that I've learned, I've hid the bandsaw line coming into the box with the grain really well, so you can't even see that, but I would definitely give more consideration about how I'm going to follow the lines all the way around. So you need to get into that box and do that cut all the way around and rejoin that as close as you can. Mine is not very neat here, so I'm a little bit disappointed in that, but we kind of hit it well. So I definitely put a little bit more preparation and planning into how I'm going to actually bring that bandsaw blade around and complete the circle of the drawer or complete the out full outline of the drawer. But other than that, I am pretty happy. Now, we also discovered that this color core works really well, so that's a good thing to know because this is available in multiple colors. So if I'm making future bandsaw boxes, we could use reds, yellows, greens, blues even to layer between all the... Uh, different wood types, which is good to know. It'd also be great for wood turning, for making bowls, for making lamps, for making candles, for making vases, that kind of thing. If you wanted to get layers in between all your layers, you get that lovely black straight line, which really highlights the layers, which really sets it off. I think it's a nice little touch. So I'm really happy with that, how that turned out. So that's that color core from Farmica. So if you want to check that out, that's what that is. So yeah, there we go, guys. A bandsaw box complete. Hopefully you've enjoyed that. Hopefully you've got something out of it. Now you know how to make a bandsaw box. Now you know not what to do when you're making a bandsaw box. So if you liked it, do give it a thumbs up. Comments and questions below. If you're new here, think about subscribing. Hit the bell notification button because YouTube will not notify you when I upload a new video. So if you want to know when I upload a new video, be sure and hit the bell too so you get the notifications. So that's it guys. I'm going to get out of here now. I shall see you in the next project. Take it easy.